Designed and used by the Luftwaffe during World War II, the Messerschmitt Mi-163 Comet is known for being the only rocket-powered fighter that entered combat and the first plane to exceed 1000 km per hour. Its development was partly due to the Germans' desperate search to counteract the growing Allied air superiority. It turned out to be an ineffective fighter due to the short duration of its fuel. Only 300 units were manufactured and responsible for the downing of only about 16 Allied planes. And it's the story we're going to see in a new video from the World Aviation Aeropedia. The development of this aircraft began in 1937 under the direction of aeronautical engineer Alexander Lipic. The goal was to create an interceptor capable of reaching altitudes and speeds that conventional aircraft could not achieve. The result was a radically innovative design, with a tailless aerodynamic structure and a propulsion unit based on a rocket engine from the Walter Company. The engine used a mixture of highly volatile fuels, concentrated hydrogen peroxide and a solution of calcium permanganate in water, which provided tremendous thrust but at the cost of significant danger to the pilot. It was very dangerous and cost the lives of many good pilots. One of them, for example, was Hasso von Pohl, of whom only the anti-acid suit was found after he had an accident in his ME-163. The use of such propellants led to the decision to build a metal fuselage, and as the Deutsche Forschungsanstalt für Segelflug Constructor, or the Glider Research Institute, where Dr. Alexander Lipich worked, did not have the means for this. The fuselage construction was initially subcontracted to Heinkel, but after they did not support him in the project, he went to Messerschmitt at the end of 1939. At that time, the Walter Company had developed its 203B rocket with 750 kilograms of thrust for assisting heavy aircraft takeoffs and was already working on an even more powerful unit. Lippisch was instructed to design a fast climbing interceptor that would use this new engine and he was told not to worry about the short flight range because it would be a point defense aircraft which would only take off when the bombers were practically overhead. It was designated as Mi-163B as the A was reserved for a series of six prototypes. The first Mi-163B flew only as a glider towed by a Messerschmitt Bf-110. The test pilot Dietmar was delighted by the flight of this ship and even went so far as to say that it was such a good glider that it even resisted landing, almost always landing off the runway. The first powered flight was on August 13, 1941 where Dietmar exceeded 497 miles per hour. In theory, Lippisch's plane was supposed to take off without difficulty thanks to a launchable wheel landing gear and land using an extendable ventral skid. The Comet was capable of reaching speeds over 590 miles per hour and climbing to an altitude of 12,000 meters in just three minutes. However, these capabilities also had serious limitations. The operational flight time was extremely short, and once the fuel ran out, the plane became a glider, forcing it to land no matter what. It was a mid-wing rocket-powered airplane design. It had a maximum takeoff weight of 4,110 kilograms and a range of 7 minutes and 30 seconds. Its maximum speed was 597 miles per hour and it had two 1.18 inches MK108 cannons. Most of the early armed comets received two high-speed automatic Moser MG-151 20mm cannons, but the standard production equipment consisted of two MK-108 30mm automatic cannons. 
the series aircraft mounted the new Walter Type 509 engine, which could be adjusted from 100 to 1,500 kilograms of thrust at sea level, and despite measuring 2.13 meters long, it only weighed 100 kilograms. In theory, this aircraft was supposed to take off without difficulty thanks to a set of reusable wheels and land using an extendable ventral skid, but this was not at all easy. It had a marked inefficiency of the rudder at low speed, which even with a slight crosswind could completely destabilize the plane. The landings were not smooth at all. Since it had no damping on its ventral skid, it could even injure the pilot's spine, or if one of these impacts affected the propellant system, it could cause a fatal explosion with the little remaining fuel. Sergio Hidalgo will showcase the comet at the National Museum of the United States Air Force in Dayton, Ohio. A museum that I have dreamed of visiting for many years, especially to make the Aeropedia videos, which I like to do with the plane next to me. Sergio had the opportunity to visit it. I invite you to watch Sergio Hidalgo's main and secondary channels. In this video, Sergio stands next to the plane to show its size and explain some details that we will further explore. A Messerschmitt Mi-163. The Germans use this plane as an interceptor aircraft. In fact, it's basically a glider that uses a rocket engine to climb super fast and then, when it ran out of fuel, in that short time it had the fuel on, it had to intercept the enemies and then it just had to glide to land. Because it had no more fuel. One of the most interesting things is that it doesn't have a horizontal stabilizer. And then the Americans took it. In addition, quite a few units of this were manufactured. So the Americans got hold of some of them. And later in the years after the war, they were able to study the whole issue of flight without a horizontal stabilizer. What is known as flying wing. The flying fairies. Just as Sergio says, these are tailless planes designed by Alexander Lippisch. And they were the precursors of many American tailless planes, like the Northrop X-4 Bantam or the Convair XF-92. And then the Flying Wings. Although Northrop had already worked on Flying Wings before I send a greeting to Sergio Hidalgo. Remember you can go see his channel of the same name or behind Sergio Hidalgo, which has a series of videos where he tours this aeronautical museum. As it was very dangerous to operate, the Luftwaffe went to extreme safety measures in the use of the Comet. The pilots and ground crew wore special suits to handle this aircraft. In early 1943, the first Special Evaluation Squadron of the ME-163B was established. In December of 1943, the Allies first became aware of the Comet's existence thanks to some photographs taken at that first base. The first base was Brandis, near Leipzig, chosen to protect what was the largest concentration of oil refineries in Germany. But at that time, the development program had been delayed again due to a bombing raid of the type of aircraft that the Comet was supposed to intercept. The Messerschmitt factories were severely damaged during an attack carried out by B-17 planes in August of 1943, where most of the pre-series batch was destroyed. The first combat took place on July 28, 1944, in which six comets took off against the formation of 596 four-engine B-17s that were heading to the Lohner Messerberg refineries. The Mi-163S did not achieve a single takedown, mainly due to their excessive approach speed, and on top of that, some of them were lost during the landings. Then there were more B-17 bomber incursions where they did achieve takedowns, but with more losses of comets. Its armament was very powerful. The Rhine Metal MK, 108 30mm cannons fired projectiles capable of destroying a fighter with just one hit and causing serious damage to bombers and even taking them down with three or four hits. But the rate of fire of these cannons was very low and their ammunition scarce, they barely had 60 projectiles. When the Mi-163 went into combat against the bombers, 
They exceeded their speed by almost 400 kilometers per hour, having barely time to release a small burst and possibly due to the low rate of fire, the target was between two launch projectiles and not being able to do more than a few passes, given the short autonomy of only about 5 or 6 minutes. Then. Once the fuel was exhausted, it became a glider, and a very easy target for the numerous fighters escorting the bomber raids. To solve the inefficiency of these encounters, the SG-500 Jack Faust system was devised. This consisted of 10 short, vertical 50mm cannons mounted on the wing roots. This weapon was fired automatically when a photoelectric cell received less light as the plane passed under the target. This system was tested on April 10th, 1945 and worked quite well, but it was already too late even for ingenious ideas. The war ended before this extraordinary plane could affect the course of the war. Although some experts believe that, had it been put into service years earlier, it could have drastically changed the outcome of the air battles over the German skies. A new installment, and many thanks to all those who contribute economically to the channel, which helps me a lot to be able to continue making this type of content. Until the next video, this is World of Aviation, 